Hey guys, what's up? So today we are going to be configuring the G7X Mark III and we will be optimizing it for vlogging. So first things first, you must make sure that this dial is on this video mode to, so to make sure that we, ha we can have manual settings over the video. So again, flip this dial like that and just make sure that this icon is matching this line over here. Okay, so the next step is to power on the camera by pressing this button. So this is what you're going to be seeing in the beginning, this screen. So first things first, I'm going to be resetting my settings to make sure that you guys know that we are on the same page. So go to page number four, which is this wrench tab, and then go to page number five, and then you'll see there reset camera. We are going to reset the basic settings first and hit OK. So this is what we have right now. So the first thing that you will see is this screen right here after resetting. So as you can see, I have no card inserted. Just for explanation purposes, I will not be needing any SD card. So first press this upper left corner button and then make sure you are on M mode, which means uh, manual exposure mode and just hit OK. This will make sure that you have manual control over all of the settings. So now you can see this screen, right? So the next thing that we need to adjust is our frame rate. What is frame rate? So frame rate is basically how many frames the camera will capture. So usually people use 60 FPS or 120 FPS for slow motion, but for other things like vlogging and cinematic recording, you will be using 24 FPS. So to change that, you will need to press this Q button. And you can see this screen, right? Go to the third box from the left and you will see there uh, four different kinds of frame rates. So there's 25, 50. Don't mind the other two. These are just lower resolution. Make sure you are on 25. So this is at 4K, right? 4K will crop in a little bit. So maybe just use this one. Just go to 25P, which is 25 pr frames per second, and then hit back. The next thing we are going to be adjusting is our shutter speed. The shutter speed is this one right here. As you can see now, it says 1 over 125. We are going to be changing that to 1 over 50 because the rule of thumb is your f shutter speed should always be double your frame rate. So remember, our frame rate is 25. So if we tap this, so 25 times 2 is 50. There you go. There is a 50 over here. So 1 over 50, hit back, and now you are using 1 over 50. The next thing that we will be adjusting is our aperture. As you can see here, the one that has this f4.0. If you want to be able to blur your background or to make sure that you are isolated from your background, you are going to have to stop up to the highest number that you have, which is the lower number. I know it sounds confusing, but just remember that the lower the number, the more out of focus background you can get. So tap that and go all the way to the left. So you can see there. There you go. Now it's f1.8 and then hit back. And now it's at f1.8. And now the ISO is basically how sensitive your camera is to light. So the lowest ISO you can go here is 125. So remember that the lower the ISO, the better because you are not creating artificial light. It's always better to use real light rather than increasing this ISO. So right now, remember, we are on manual mode. Our shutter is on 50. Our aperture is at f1.8 and our ISO is at 125. Feel free to adjust this according to your needs, depending on your environment you're shooting in. So the next thing that we are be going to be adjusting is our white balance. White balance can be a little bit tricky. So the way to access white balance is just press this Q button on this upper right corner. And you can see on this right side, there are different icons. Go to the third one, which says this, which has this logo, AWB, which means auto white balance. So white balance is basically how your camera sees white colors. So the best way to just understand this if, is if you're outside, make sure you are on daylight. And if it's a little bit cloudy, you can press cloudy. And yeah, there are many different conf uh, settings here that you can adjust. We, you can even play around with the color temperature. So if you are really a beginner, you can just set it at auto white balance. But I'm warning you that whenever you set it at auto white balance, there's a chance that the color will change during your shot. So maybe just stick to one color. I advise you to just stick to one white balance like daylight. A daylight is a very safe white balance to play around with. And yeah, so make sure you're always at one white balance instead of just shifting around between auto. So the next thing that we are going to be playing around with is, is autofocus. So autofocus is this one. If you press your Q button, you can see the second box on the left. 
there are two modes, right? There's tracking and spot focus. Spot focus means whatever is in front of the camera, it will focus. Tracking allows you to click on any subject in the screen and then it will track that subject. As you can see, I'm moving the coin all over the place. This little box over here is tracking it. So just imagine that that is a face. So yeah, let's go ahead and continue. So the next thing that we are gonna be playing around with is the ND filter. So if you click this, look at the fourth box over here, which is ND. When you are outside and you are using f1.8, there's a high chance that there's so much light entering your camera. So it's gonna be so bright that you can't see anything. So if you are in a situation like that, all you need to do is just press Q, ND filter, and press on. As you can see, it darkened the image, right? Just imagine you are putting sunglasses in front of your lens and it allows you to still use f1.8 despite a very sunny day. So what if you are already outdoors and you switched on the ND filter and it's still bright? What you can do is adjust the aperture again. So f1.8, if you really need to adjust brightness levels and it's still too bright, just press this and adjust it. So remember, the higher the number, the darker the image will be. The next thing that we will be talking about is picture style. So I have already prepared a picture style to share with you guys. So what is picture style? Picture style is how your image will look like straight out of camera. Some people like to color grade, but some people like me, I prefer to just have a very fast workflow by just having a pre-installed picture profile that I don't need to color grade. So how do I adjust the picture profile? So here's what we do. We press the Q button and go to the fourth box on the right and then you're gonna be presented with these, right? So scroll all the way to the right and then you'll see one, two, three. We're gonna play around with number one. And then we are gonna define this setting. So press menu and then we are gonna be adjusting these settings. So first of all, change this to standard, put the sharpness all the way down to zero, hit back, contrast, put at negative one because we don't want an over contrasty image, hit back. Click saturation, and we're gonna put it at plus one, so we don't need to resaturate in post. Hit back, so and then click on color tone, put it at plus one. So just to recap, we put it on standard profile, zero on sharpness, negative one on contrast, plus one on saturation, and plus one on color tone. This one will give you a very good image straight out of camera. So that's pretty much it, guys. Those are the main settings that you can adjust in your G7X Mark III to make sure that the image that you get out of the camera is as good as possible. So if you have any other questions regarding the G7X Mark III or the G7X Mark II, please do comment down below and I will try to help you guys out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.